Hey guys, Manda here, and today um, I'm actually, I was working in my mom's shade garden, and tomorrow we're supposed to get like tornadoes. So I live in the valley in Pennsylvania, and it's like unlikely that we do get tornadoes, but we're supposed to get some really bad storms and possible tornadoes. So I'm not looking forward to that, because when we get them, we get them. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna bring you around a tour on this garden. Uh, mainly because if anything gets damaged, it will probably be this garden. And the reason being, that tree right there. So that tree right there, it's dangerous and it's actually not ours. So we can't fully remove it. Now you would think that the people who own the property would, right? Yeah, well, the first person um, who actually had the property, when the tree well, when part of the tree fell on ours, well, you know, we had a battle with them and he put the property up for sale. So now these new people have it and they don't even like live there. I don't know what their plan is, but um, I just hope that the rest of the tree stays up and we don't get these really bad storms. Anyway, let's continue with this garden tour. Um, like I said, it's gonna be gorgeous. Okay, so right up front here, this bush, we have a plum, a cherry plum. Um, I'm actually going to let it get big and thin out the branches below so it could be like a multi-trunk bush. That way when we're sitting in the back here and on the back porch and also in the kitchen area, we can look out and we can kind of like see through the bottom and see the rest of the garden behind it. This gazebo will be painted this year, but all right, let's go to my mom's garden. Oh, and by the way, these are like peonies and they're about to bloom. So I hope like, you know, they're getting there. I don't want them to get damaged though in this storm. Sorry, this is like kind of like a store all place. I'm actually going to clean it up really nice this summer. So here's some plants I just put in. Look at that salvia. Now on the camera, it looks more like a light purple with a dark purple stem, but it's more blue. It's definitely like the black and blue salvia. And this gets huge. It gets like three feet tall and you know, two feet wide. So it's really bushy. We have this clematis that's about to bloom. That's trailing off and it's gonna go up and over this gazebo area here. My dad actually built this. So it's very old, but you can see there's the tree. <laughs> if it does lose some branches, I don't want it to damage this. I would be so heartbroken if it did. And here we have these bleeding hearts. These are like one of my favorite flowers. I love these in the spring. And they like seed or spread or something because the original one is actually, uh, you really can't see it too well in the camera, but it's kind of like back in there. Um, and then there came this one, then there came another one that I recently transplanted in another spot, which I will show you later. Some wonderful irises. The irises in my garden are actually from my mother's grandmother's, so my great-grandmother's house in Staten Island. Yeah, she took some from their garden and they came to Pennsylvania with her. Pretty cool, you know, it's like four generations and these uh, flowers keep procreating. Another peony. No, I don't see any, oh, there's an ant. Yeah, kind of hard to see on the camera here, but ants are needed for peonies uh, to help open them. 
there's a process that they help with and I don't know, I found that kind of interesting. Now oh, there's one little guy there. Little birdie house. I just planted this plum tree. Um, this is actually like a small one because we did lose. Here, you see that? You can probably see more of the maple. We lost that like two huge trunks out of it. You can see where it's cut. So this whole area used to be shaded. So now I'm bringing in some like large shrubs slash small trees to help like fill in the space. But everything, when that fell, not like a, a lot didn't get damaged, which we're thankful for. Some corbels, more salvia, ferns, lamium, right up front here. This is a great ground cover. And the bees love it. In the morning, I could come out and just see the bees covered. Or see this thing covered with bees. Some lovely flocks. Some brunnera. This brunnera is like fabulous. There's two other ones in this garden. They're like really full. This whole area, this flocks actually could be divided. It's huge. Now there's a little pathway that winds around and we will take that but first let's go down this way um it's a little weeded <laughs> here but it is what it is love this japanese fern right here look at this I think this is the best year this fern has been. We got some pinks in the back. It's like a cottage garden must have. We got some blues and pinks mixed in there. Uh, but let me go back this way here. So we have some hostas filling in this area. They're doing wonderfully around this tree here. We have some ivy that's Maybe it'll grow, maybe it won't. This will be its second year, so we'll see how, what happens. I also stuck a ground cover in there just recently, and hopefully it will spread. These hostas really filled up, though. Some more flocks. Yeah, so here are these pinks. Aren't they like the most delicate, fairy-like flower. Some more ferns. I love this corabelle. This is like one of the first things I gave my mom in this garden. And then also we have this lilac on standard here. It's going to bloom white. You see the buds up top. Let's go down the path here. So these are the proven winners. Double petaled impatience. Now they keep reblooming. Like I know they may look <laughs> fall apart. Uh, may look a little rough, but these guys are gonna keep blooming. Proven winners is such a great brand to buy plants from. I'm not even like worried about its performance. I just stuck it in like maybe three days ago. Some Melissa I just stuck in again just a few days ago. It's gonna be a nice ground cover. This is one of the oldest plants, one of the first plants I should say, that my mom put in this garden. This is a oak leaf hydrangea. You could identify it just by looking at the leaves. More like of a oak leaf, hence the name. Probably need to come in here and Prune out some dead. Oh yeah, this little basket and hook. I'm going to get like a succulent that hangs down. If you guys have any recommendations, let me know. 
because I don't know too much about succulents, but I really like them and I put succulents in here last year as you can see some remnants and they did okay. Some more ground covers I planted. I love that blue color. Like on the camera it looks more purple, but this is definitely blue. Like a true royal blue. Some daylilies. I love this little pathway here. Now I'm actually going to be cleaning this out, relaying the brick. You can see there's brick in here and also some stones I'm going to put in. And I'm going to put a finish over top of it so I don't ever have to worry about weeds, at least on the pathway. All right, but here's the oak leaf again. And with the oak leaf, once it's established, like three years on, I'll actually start sending out like shoots far from the center. Like this is a shoot here. And you can actually just snip them and um, try to grow another oak leaf hydrangea if you want. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do that and just snip some, make some cuttings, see if I could grow them elsewhere. I just love this alyssum here. It's such a pretty color. The pinks, whites, and purples. This is the um, the other bleeding heart that I was pointing out to you. There is that bright green apple corabelle or hookara. Some of the still bees that have not bloomed yet. Ah, oh, it is year of the hostas, I'm telling you. We had a lot of rain, so that helped. But this is, they get bigger and bigger every year. Got pot black back there with some irises, but I'm definitely gonna have to plant something else in there. Oh look, there's a little bee visiting the pink. So precious. Some little garden decor here. My mom actually got this at the yard sale my church was having. It has a pretty sound. Oh, and this is the Brunera, Brunera right here. It is massive. And I love these little blooms. And once the blooms are faded, you still have this nice foliage right here. It's a bright spot. It's great for like uh, in shade gardens. So down here it gets a little more sunny. This is a a standard hydrangea limelight. And just back there you could see the other bleeding heart. It's very small. Um, but that was the actual one that I found in the garden. This whole area here fills with like phlox and um, coneflowers. So it's definitely more like in the sun. More flocks here. Oh, I just love this color. And I love how like it's whole that's lined with rocks. I think that's such like a sweet little touch. My mom is very creative. She has some of the still bees in here, and I just planted these uh, Namis, Namisas, oh, I forget the name. They were on clearance, but they're such a bright, bright, like true lemon yellow color. And if you get close up on the back, oh, come on, focus. Hmm, let me see if I can focus on, on this one. Okay, you see that dark veining on the back there? Like, how pretty is that? It's just those little details. More alyssum. Another impatient that I planted. Oh, this is such a neat garden. Springtime is like the best time for this garden.
And that wooden fence back there, my dad actually also made. Uh, it's custom. Like every slab is something that he did. It wasn't like pre made and, you know, him put it together here or anything. He was very much the uh, handyman. There's the lilac. Oh, and here's another lilac. Hi, lilac. Hey, baby. Oh, you're a little nervous. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> and this is like, um, this is what I call my swoop garden. I did not weed this area yet. I will be working on it sometime this week. But another like hydrangea on standard there, more irises. Um, peonies, some evergreen interest right there with the lemon cypress. And this is also a birdhouse that um, I was actually on a walk <laughs> one night and I saw this and I was like, ooh, I want it. <laughs> so I usually put like little um pots in here with succulents and just let them do their thing i painted it purple it was originally like white but yeah i need to go around and like find more stuff like this <laughs> so but look how charming that garden is it's small but it's so impactful yeah oh and here's a better view yeah see that Half the maple tree is gone. That's a snappy maple and they're everywhere in our area. They're very dangerous trees. Hence the name, Snappy. All right guys, so I think this is gonna be it. Thank you for watching. Um, sorry about like any noise. Like I like to hear nature's noise, like the birds and other insects and stuff. But I live on a main street, and you know we get cars, and I have neighbors, and sometimes you hear the kids going, and you know it, it is what it is. It's town living. So, but thanks for watching, and until next time, take care. Bye.